going to move on to the protectorate. Um, and this is the last phase of the Commonwealth of England. And uh, so this, this attempt to form uh, a, a, a genuine full-fledged republic uh, moves through its final phase at this point. So let's take a look at that. All right, so in 1653, uh, in, an instrument of government. So there's, this is a document. So this is uh, uh, a document that's proposed to the bare bones parliament um, sponsored by Cromwell. Uh, it's called the instrument of government and it's the first written constitution of England. It is, it is, uh, adopted by this hand-selected uh, parliament. And it's based on the heads of proposals that the grandees had proposed in opposition to the agreement of the people of the levelers uh, that I discussed earlier. So it's more conservative, but does make some concessions in the way of the levelers of the rank and file of the new model army. Um, it has an executive position called the Lord Protector. Cromwell is, is uh, placed as, as the Lord Protector. Um, now, Cromwell is the executive, just like the monarch used to be the executive who has in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in a single person, somebody who can make decisions very quickly, especially in times of emergency, but also just, you know, make arbitrary decisions as they need to be made to keep the government running. That's the power of the executive, like our president. Uh, the executive was held by the monarch before this. There is no monarch. They were running the government through parliamentary procedure, which can be messy and time consuming and slow. Um, now they have an executive, but it's Cromwell. And Cromwell is not nobility. He is from a landed, gentry family, so his family traditionally had wealth, but no noble title. And, um, and he gained his notoriety from being a, a grandee of the new model army, and especially his success in Scotland and ousting Charles II. Um, as part of the, um, the instrument of government, the executive has a life term. So now Cromwell is the executive for life, very much along the lines of the monarch, um, but um, it's not a hereditary title. He can't pass it down to his, his oldest son uh, and things like that. And um, uh, in this first round, he's elected merely by the council of officers, by, by a handful of lead officers of the military. So it, at times, um, the protectorate looks like a military dictatorship, like something along the lines of a, of a Latin American military dictatorship that we see uh, in our times, especially in the 20th century. Uh, but it isn't, um, it isn't genuinely a military dictatorship uh, in, the, in those worst forms. It, it, is, uh, it is still, a situation where a parliament has a lot of control over the executive and the executive has limited powers. Uh, and this is where a lot of our ideas for the American constitution, uh, the constitution of the United States comes about as uh, this, uh, this document and the experience, how, you know, it was an experiment uh, when we wrote our constitution, we had that experience to look back on. <clears throat> uh, so we have a uh, first protected parliament, uh, second protected parliament, um, and in the second parliament, so you know, first parliament was called, there were elections formed, and then, um, and then it was dissolved, okay. 
and um, by Cromwell, the executive. And then a second parliament was called, there was new elections and parliament would last for multiple sessions. Um, so it's prorogued and then they come back. Um, in the midst of this, they, they offer uh, the humble petition and advice, which is a new document. It's uh, another written constitution, which is ultimately adopted. Um, uh, and um, part of uh, part of this document is the hereditary uh, a hereditary monarchy for Cromwell. So now they're reinstituting the monarchy, but this is a monarchy that is highly contained by parliament, but it is a, her a hereditary monarchy. So um, Cromwell lost a lot of support in accepting this and they added back an upper chamber. Um, and so, um, yeah, they're sort of moving backwards, but nonetheless, um, it still is not an absolute monarchy. This is very much a, a monarchy that is contained by parliament, uh, but maybe not as strong as, as the initial constitution. So they come back for a second session and the upper chamber, which now exists, is stuffed by Cromwell. Um, that causes trouble with meaning when I say it's stuff by Cromwell, he, he picked the members uh, and made sure they were elected uh, through maybe corrupt means um, to create his own voting block. Uh, this upsets the House of Commons. Uh, and then um, this, this parliament is quickly dissolved by Cromwell and Cromwell then dies before a new parliament is called. So a lot of changes took place very quickly that would seem like going backwards and then Cromwell dies. So we see uh, Cromwell is maybe, um, maybe concerned that he's going to die and, he's, and he wants to create a hereditary position as just a fallback as maybe it was sneaking up on him, um, but it's kind of, leaving things in disarray. Uh, Richard Cromwell, uh, Oliver Cromwell's son, becomes the Lord Protector, um, but he has no confidence from the army because he's a civilian. Uh, he has no military experience. He has no experience in parliament, so he doesn't have any respect from the parliamentarians. Uh, and so, um, He's not really qualified for the position, and and this is this causes things to devolve very quickly. Um, a new parliament is called uh, under Richard uh, Cromwell, and quickly factions develop. Uh, those who are for the protected protectorate to continue under Cromwell, and that was a strong group. But but there was always also these Commonwealthmen. Uh, people who wanted to return to the earlier form of constitution and also members that were still around who were members of the rump parliament from way back at the beginning of the commonwealth before the commonwealth was ever formed and um, and they all had their different ideas about how the commonwealth should be reformed to meet the current circumstances. Uh, they are unable to form any sort of stable government. And uh, on April 23rd, uh, just after January, when the parliament uh, came into session, uh, the council of officers of the new model army blocked the chambers and uh, dissolve this this new parliament. 
then the Council of Our Officers uh, removes Richard. They say, hey, Richard, you got to retire. Um, they were not um, aggressive or, uh, you know, wanting, they, they certainly didn't want to harm Richard in any way. The Council of Officers had promised to take care of Richard. Uh, you know, Cromwell was their guy. Um, and so they're taking care of his son, but uh, they see that he can't rule, so they're, they're, they just tell him that he can't do it anymore. And, um, and, they, and so then they call the rump parliament from way back in the day, and this is part of the faction that had existed in the, in the final uh, protectorate parliament. And so um, the next day after the rump parliament is called, they want everybody to show up and, and the new model army has troops stationed around the chambers. Uh, they escort the rump parliament into chambers and they start business. Uh, again, uh, a military coup. Um, and Then uh, shortly thereafter, um, the council of officers decides this isn't working. And so they bar the rump parliament from chambers. So it's another coup on the part of the council of officers. So they're just trying to manipulate things in a gross way. Um, the Navy sides with parliament and that kind of turns things against the new model army. They're not able to, uh, you know, the Navy is able to intimidate them and, and, uh, and reseat the rump parliament. Because, um, of course, the Navy can cut off supply chains and, um, and all, you know, merchant activity and really hurt the city of London and cause economic chaos. Um, so they just have to make a few threats and, and, and that's all resolved pretty quickly. So the rump parliament is restored, okay, in December. And then uh, there's George Monk, who is a grandee of the new model army, but has been stationed as the commander, the chief commander in Scotland uh, for several years uh, after the Scottish expedition of Cromwell. And, um, he sides with the rump parliament and he takes his army in Scotland and starts marching towards England. Um, uh, some resistance is put up by some of the uh, council of officers, uh, you know, major generals, and they uh, attempt to engage with Monk, but uh, the soldiers sort of desert in mass and don't offer much resistance. And Monk just slowly but progressively marches into London. Uh, and in February, um, Monk forcibly reinstates the members of the, the secluded member of parliament uh, from Pride's Purge uh, back in 1648. So now we have the long parliament fully restored at least those members who are still alive, right? And participating. These are all, so what Monk has done is to reinstate the House of Lords from the original uh, long parliament, which means that, um, that now parliament is much more royalist in its outlook. And so you have a lot of these older parliamentarians who are of nobility, being reintroduced into parliament. You have the rump parliament, which also are older and maybe more conservative members of the House of Commons who have seen the whole uh, troubles of the Commonwealth. So uh, the royalists are gaining strength and uh, And so they, they call up this new parliament and meets in April and quickly by the middle of March, the 
long parliament dissolved itself. Remember that the long parliament, its first order of business was to enact back in 1640, when Charles called them to address the bishops war. The first act that they did was to make it so that they couldn't be dissolved unless they agreed to dissolve themselves. Monk forces militarily in a coup type action forces the long parliament to reassemble and then has the long parliament dissolve itself. Um, but they did it not only did it through this force of arms, but also they didn't even have a proper quorum of the pro proper number of members meeting when they dissolved parliament. So it's all very fishy, but um, that's sort of the inglorious uh, dissolution of the long parliament. And this is the end of the Commonwealth uh, this is the end of the Republican experiment. And so we see that the death uh, of Cromwell really precipitated a uh, total collapse of the Commonwealth. Um, and in part, maybe this was due to his heavy handed um, dictatorial style, you know, instead of favoring something more along the lines of the levelers. They favored this more conservative form of, form of government, uh, this more uh, conservative ideology baked into the legal structure, um, and it just can't maintain itself without a strong arm, a strong arm politician like Cromwell. Okay, so I'll, I'll leave this section at that, and then we'll move on to the restoration.